So you clicked on this video to see about how to install a uh, Canton AccuSump or pretty much any AccuSump into a C5Z06. Uh, probably worked very similar on the non-Z06. Uh, the LS has a similar port and everything. But anyway, uh, this is my three quart system in my Z06. And if you follow along in the video, I'll show you how I get it installed. It's not that difficult overall. Uh, I've never done any of this before. I've never made oil lines and I found it pretty simple to do. Uh, there was some fabrication needed, uh, and I'll show you that in the video because, you know, obviously this doesn't normally sit here, but uh, totally, uh, totally does work. Optionally, people remove the foam piece in front of the bumper and mount it right there to the steel bumper, and it fits pretty well, I guess. And you don't need to completely disassemble the car like this to make it happen, but anyway, let's get stuck into the work and uh, follow along. Taking this off, uh, there's a bunch of 7 millimeter uh, bolts that hold this in, and then... Uh, I think this is like a T15 star or whatever. And that's gonna be for, there's a whole bunch of things in here. I'm gonna take this whole fender out. So when taking off the side panel, I decided to also take off the front bumper because the two bolts at the front of the side panel are bolted through the bumper. You see me there in the corner and that was a lot of work. So I just took it all off. So I got it temporarily on and duct taped kind of in place, but it seems to fit. It's touching here. And, uh, but it's, it seems to be pretty open everywhere else. So if we take this off, see I cut it back a little bit more back in there. And the way these clamps work, you can only clamp here and here. So if I put the bottom one, I somehow get it to tighten to the frame. And this one up here, I build something back here to connect it to. That should, be out of the way enough that I can get the AccuSump in there and then through the hole right here that's uh, there's this piece that sits in there like that so if I pull that out then I can like get in here to connect to the bottom of it to do any kind of maintenance I guess so I'm not a master fabricator but I got this uh, bar stock aluminum and then just kept bending it with the vise until I got it in place. Then I installed some nut certs into the frame in a couple of places and bolted it all together and it seems to work really good. Well, it's mounted. Like every other uh, fabrication thing I do, it's not, you know, perfect or prettiest, but I reused one bolt there and then this is kind of bolted through and then I got that all in. It's not perfect. I could have done better at like bending this, but I was bending it by hand. I don't have a break, but this is, it's like, I can move the car by pulling on this thing. So it's not going anywhere. I got just enough room for the line to come off the bottom here. And it's gonna go 90 degrees this way. And then up through that hole, over and, and right, let's see, right there. I guess I could put the line like directly here and underneath this and kind of like bring it along here and there. So I don't know what I'll do, but uh, whatever whatever works out the best. Either way, this thing is in now. I completely forgot all about the valve that goes on the bottom of this. So take it all off, put the valve back on, get started on some of the electrical. <laughs> if you saw the video of the time-lapse, I completely forgot about the uh, pressure cylinder, or the solenoid, the pressure valve and all that to go on the bottom of this. But luckily it all fits, so this is where the plastic will be for the bottom of the car. There's just enough room for the line to come out from here, and go either down and, or up through this gap I made, and then around, and then back and in, plugged into the, uh, the engine. So now I'm working on the electrical. It's pretty simple. Um, there's two lines, electrical lines that come off of here. There's two um, electrical lines that come off the back of the solenoid and one goes to ground, which I'm gonna use the stock grounding point uh, strap up there. And then the other one goes into one side of the pressure switch. The other side of the pressure switch is the power for it. And right now I'm gonna find a way to run that uh, up into the car uh, because you want that on like an accessory switch. I'm gonna cut a hole right here so I can look through and see this. I did a lot of research last night and if this loses pressure, it causes lots of problems. And I don't want it to lose pressure, so I'm going to not mess with this. They do not recommend you, you like put this. I was gonna have an extension line and put it in there, 
put it under the hood somewhere. But they said that's a bad idea. So I'm just gonna cut this open so that way I can look through and physically see, you know, just right here above that, look through that little hole right there. All right, so I didn't show a lot of video of this and this will kind of change depending on your car and your setup. But for the AccuSump, you know, this shows the pressure or the, uh, the outline here. You know, from coming from that electrical solenoid, you need the one, one side of it goes to ground. The other guy side goes to the pressure switch, which is that thing there on the bottom left. And then it comes back into the switch. They provide a switch with, uh, with the unit. And that switch needs to have positive power going to it. So you want it to kind of turn on automatically, or at least that's a, a generally way of doing it. So what I, what, how I have it wired is when the ignition is on, uh, I'm pulling off of one of the ignition wires, power comes to um, a toggle switch, and then from that toggle switch goes down to the AccuSump. So uh, this is that toggle switch right here in, uh, in that diagram. Um, now the electrical or the uh, the LED kit that they sell with it, there it is. So on the LED kit, it adds another wire to. Let's see if I can hold this in two places. It adds an LED uh, second connector onto this pressure control switch right here. You see that makes a little like pigtail. So normally it would just go from here to here and that's it. But now it goes from here to here and then it bridges and comes in the cab to the LED and then that goes to ground. So what I've done is I'm. For right now not running a radio in this car so I made this um, I made the wires extra long so I could take it out I, I don't like having to unplug things to work on it so I made this little plastic thing which fits in here pretty much perfectly flat so when the uh, the center console is in here you can't it just looks black and this is the toggle switch so I set it to where down is on because I'm probably going to leave it on all the time. I want it in the down position. Uh, so that way nothing gets snagged on it and turns it off. So that'll be on. And then that's the LED right there. And looking at the um, the back of it. So that's coming from the other side of that uh, electrical uh, or the uh, pressure switch. Comes in here. Goes into one side of the LED. And then the other side I'm just grounding it using the radio's ground. So... What this LED does is anytime the solenoid discharges or the pressure thing drops, this will light up to, to let me know that the AccuSump has discharged, to let me know that it's actually doing something. Um, now that's that's how the wiring's done. As far as like in your C5 Corvette, I mean, different cars, different things, but um, the radio plug right here has one constant on, which is um, this kind of orange wire. And it doesn't have like a traditional accessory wire. So what I did was some C5s, apparently not the 2004s, but also not on this one I, as far as I can tell. There's supposed to be a wire over here that's just kind of wrapped up that has a uh, constant 12 volt, an accessory 12 volt, and a negative. I couldn't find that. So what I did find is um, this is fuse 22. It is wide open and it... Um, it's on when you turn the key on. So what I did is I get one of these accessory um, or these uh, whatever fuse jumpers. And as long as you put, see like this just has the fuse in the top. So power will turn on to that spare fuse place. And instead of sending power back into whatever's connected at the back of this, it only powers this offshoot here. And then I put a really nice, um, everything I do has um, uh, shrink tubes. So it looks really nice and professional and doesn't have anything messed up. But now that that's in there, now I can patch this all up. And when you turn the key on, that switch gets power. I have some other stuff to put back in here, so I'm not ready to just finally mount this. That You see that big hole there? I'm going to be installing a, a USB connector thing in there. So that way this can be here and um, I can plug in all my cameras and data loggers. Because this is a race car, I'm going to have a data, log mount, a data logger mounted like right here so I can interface with it when I'm racing and check out my runs. Um, and then I'm gonna use that to power that as well as some cameras in the car. But uh, I guess I can cover this up. All right, so it's kind of hard to show this under the car, but I'm gonna put it in this orientation. It's gonna actually be on the side of the block like this. Uh, I've got that port blocked off with a little bit of Teflon. I put a little Teflon on the uh, oil sensor here. And then this is actually gonna be angled like that. 
and it's kind of right behind this pointed towards where I am taking the video from. But let me assemble this real quick. From my understanding, I've never really made AN lines, but it looks like it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna screw this thing on to the end as, as hard as I can get to where this is connected or touching the end here of the connector. Once that's in, then this just press it in and um, press it in and use those kind of uh, screw lines there to uh, screw it into the inside of the hose. So let's get that made. So you just keep turning the hose and jamming it in there until uh, the rubber meets the end where those lines are and then going to shove that in and uh, put downward pressure and turn and it should suck it in. And while doing that, making sure that this is not coming out the bottom because that needs to stay up as high as it can go. Now I don't have the special clamp um, to do AN fittings and I don't really care if they get scratched up. So, you know, I just put this little towel in here to hopefully uh, keep it from getting scratched. But yeah, I'm gonna now put that in. I decided to do it this way because then I can put this in and out of the car multiple times to make sure the angle was right and then get that, then get that situated in there. So let's get going. So that turned out to be a lot more work than I thought, but I got the line created and you can kind of see this is the high temperature stuff all around the fitting and then it goes all the way up and out there. Um, one thing I didn't account for is how much thicker that made it and it doesn't bend as easily. But I got this on now. I'm gonna put the oil filter on here uh, so I can uh, fill the car with oil. I've got my temperature sensor which kind of comes up here and out of the way. On this side, the line is in. It's all tightened on. This was kind of a pain to get this thing on. Um, being really close to the car is kind of a problem. It's not actually touching it. It'll be, it's bent just enough. There you go. That it's not actually touching it. I might put some like piece of rubber there just so it doesn't like, I don't know, just so it doesn't like rub against it. And I did put this as kind of like a strain relief. So it's kind of holding it in place. And then the hose kind of comes up and uh, up and over in between a bunch of things. I need to put something else because there's that, that ground bolt right there that's kind of touching it. Now it is kind of touching the steering and it does turn freely, which I'm sure will rub on that. I got to figure out something to do there. There's, I could have gone up even higher right here, but then it would have been almost touching the headers and I don't want that. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. I have extra line. If this doesn't end up working, I'll redo it. But uh, I just need to get through this first couple races so I get going. So I'm going to put the oil filter on and fill this with oil um, and then try to figure out how to uh, charge this for the first time. My understanding of the instructions are I'm going to disable the switch so that way this does not activate. I'm going to fill the car with oil like you normally would and I'm going to put extra oil in like overfill it by one or two quarts. So that way I start the car, it's got extra oil, builds oil pressure, I flip the switch, which activates the solenoid and opens it, and all of the, uh, the pressure between the engine and this equalize, so all the extra oil goes up in here. And then running it with, uh, with that, then I uh, fill this up like you normally would. To its its full amount. Uh, at least that's where I. Well, got it running. First time, about 40 pounds of pressure, no leaks. I know I had water on here because I was checking for air leaks, but I don't see any drips. I know there's some oil down there, but that's from when I changed it earlier. I'm gonna let this run for a few minutes. The instructions say let it run for three minutes, so I'm gonna let it do that and uh, just monitor the. Uh, the oil pressure it says in the instructions to turn off or you could turn off the valve and in my case that's on let's uh hit reset you can see the oil pressure there it's complaining that i got a whole bunch of other stuff wrong with the car because <laughs> i have like half the car disconnected but 50 pounds oil pressure and that's what that valve should be reading so i'm gonna turn this off uh yeah i know up is off because i want it down to be on all the time and i didn't want to accidentally hit it so I'm gonna let the car run and uh, check for oil pressure or oil leaks. Other than that, I think we're good to go. 
All right, so the engine has about nine, eight, eight and a half quarts of oil in it. This car normally holds seven, and then that's a three quart system. It's not completely full. The dipstick only shows almost full. Um, and it currently it's holding 60 pounds of pressure, and which is great. I did have one little leak that I found uh, coming from this, but I t it was super loose. So I tightened that up, and uh, I ended up having to drain the oil, take that out, put Teflon on it, put it back on. Definitely do that first. Hopefully that'll stay loose. So me, I uh, take you through how this is gonna work when you actually have one installed. So let me get in there and. All right, so you got the you got the Aki sump installed. And now I have the switch and, and valve over here. Now my switch, it looks like down, that is on. So as soon as I turn this key, the ignition will power the solenoid which will immediately release that 60 pounds of oil pressure directly into the engine before I even turn the before, before I even start the car. So, so I click it over and that blue light I think will discharge. Yep, you see how it popped over and the car, I haven't even started it yet, but look at the oil pressure. So, beautiful oil pressure. The car is very unhappy since I've disconnected everything, but you can see it's 28 pounds and it's it's deep it's 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 going off so start the car and make sure it's not in gear i guess so 46 pounds of pressure and that's it the car has successfully uh oil uh, oiled itself before i started it now i can flip this switch which will turn off the um uh, the solenoid and cutting off the oil to it keeping it at the pressure or in this case um you know it's got 49 pounds of pressure i'm just going to turn the key off which in rapid succession as soon as i turn the key off the power stops on the solenoid and it keeps the um accusump pressurized 100 percent. so i'm going to do that right now so turn off the car the car is very unhappy with the <laughs> the, the active handling system and it's got about 50 pounds of pressure. And that's what it had when I shut it off. So if I actually like rev the engine up and then shut it off immediately, you know, that would leave that thing at a much higher uh, pressure. So that's how it works. So I'm gonna end the video here. I know I got a lot of stuff to put back together, but my first, well, I'm probably really dirty now. My first race is uh, for four days from now, something like that. And I just got done putting the suspension on this car. I've got a lot of videos coming out on this thing. Uh, I just put coilover suspension on the car, the battery, my data logger mounts, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, hit subscribe if you want to see more stuff on a C5. If you want to see this thing hit the racetrack, there's going to be a video of it right here. Um, and then uh, probably more videos on this LS3 build from my 01. It's got a dry sump, so I'll get to compare and contrast between two race cars, one having an Accu sump and one having a full-on dry sump. And then uh, I guess compared to the GTI, it just has a, a special upgraded baffle pan. Anyway. I'm rambling. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one, and I hope to see you at the racing. See ya.